Good afternoon, Year 3. We're continuing with our history topic, looking at um, the Stone Age. And today, what we're really going to focus on is why Stone Age people settled in different places. So we're going to be asking you to imagine you live in the Stone Age, and you're going to be thinking about where would you choose somewhere for you and your family to live for a short time if uh, you lived in the Stone Age. So let's have a little look through. Um, just like last week, We've got a quiz for you in your assignments, and these are the questions that you're going to be asked. Again, just like last week, all of these answers are going to be in this video. So if you want to pause the video now, write down these questions, then you will be able to look for the answers while we are going. Uh, remember that uh, whenever there is a, you need to write a word, you need to spell the word correctly or you won't get the mark. OK, so if you wrote them down now, you'd have a chance to find the correct words and write them down while they're on the screen. OK. So uh, first thing to think about is where Sheffield is on this map of the UK. Right here's Sheffield. Uh, fairly central towards the north, uh, but in the centre of the country. And this is what Sheffield looks like today. Um, however, uh, 10,000 years ago, at the end of the Ice Age, um, England, Britain, was actually joined to the rest of Europe. All of this area here was actually part, um, was above the water. What's now in the North Sea was actually a piece of land. OK, which is referred to as Doggerland. Um, and there's Sheffield just there. You can see that it was quite easy for things to walk from Europe to Britain. And where we are now in Sheffield would have looked like this, completely covered in ice. Um, so there's Sheffield. And last week we talked about Creswell Crags. And this is a picture of what Creswell Crags looks like today. And as you can see, Creswell Crags is just below Sheffield. So that's what it looks like today with its cliffs and the grass and the trees. But at the end of the Ice Age, Creswell Crags looked very different, looked like this, completely covered in snow. Not, you know, there were some trees around, but not a great deal, very bleak place. And yet people uh, did walk across uh, Britain and through Europe to get to Creswell Crags for certain months of the year because animals came to live there. Okay, so what was it about Creswell Crags that made it a good place to live? Well, these are some of the geographical features of Creswell Crags that made it somewhere that people wanted to live. For a start, it had caves, and it had caves, uh, which meant there was somewhere sheltered for people to live. Uh, there were crags. Crags are these bits of rock sticking out. And again, that just meant that people could uh, find shelter to build their fires. There were rocks. Remember that in the Stone Age, it was those rocks that the Stone Age people were using to make all of their tools with. With no rocks, you wouldn't be able to survive. You wouldn't be able to kill the animals. You wouldn't be able to build the things you needed. So having a good supply of rocks was very important. There was a river. Now, this river running through the middle of these cliffs was immensely important because it was that river that brought animals to live there during the warm months. When it wasn't frozen over in spring and summer, um, that river attracted animals from miles around, making it a good place to build your home. Because if your main food is from eating animals, then having a river nearby that animals would drink from was an extremely good reason to live there. And the forest as well. Forest had two important purposes. One, it supplied wood, which you would use for your fire, for your tools, um, and for building. But it also uh, was somewhere to gather food from. Animals would live there, but also things like berries and nuts and leaves, you could gather them from the forest. So all of these things, were extremely important reasons why people lived in Creswell Crags. Okay, um, but Creswell Crags was not the only place that Stone Age people lived in Britain. 
We've also found archaeologists, remember they're the people who dig through the ground looking for evidence from the past. Archaeologists have found um, remains at a place called Starkar. Now Starkar is towards the north of Sheffield, so closer to the coast near Scarborough and Filey. So in this area here, remember Sheffield is about here. Okay, so Starkar has another Stone Age settlement. Okay, um, and I'm going to show you now a video uh, sort of demonstrates what Starkar used to look like. Let me get this plain and large. So there we go. Like I said, it's towards the north of Sheffield. Just zooming in on it now. Any minute now. So you can see there's a large lake there. You remember that forest is building and also also notice it's very flat, whereas physical cracks are properly This is a very flat area with the Near the different animals that live there, the deer. Creeping in. And there we go. There is a village settlement. They're not living in caves. They're living in these huts which have been built. The smoke coming from the centre, the fire would be in there, the boats they would use to paddle out into the water to catch fish. Okay. So, um, so there were no crags, there were no cliffs, cliffs at Starkar. People did not live in caves. They lit, made these shelters, and these were made using the wood around them. They used the grass that grew, and they made using animal skins, were covered the sides to uh, make them waterproof. So Starkar looked very different not caves at all, proper built shelters. So why did people settle there? Well, you had the lake. Now the lake was a plentiful supply of water to drink, uh, gave somewhere for the animals to come to. Remember what we said about Creswell Crags? Animals come to drink from places with water. So that makes them a good place for hunting. But also, of course, you'd be able to fish in the lake. Uh, the land was flat. Now, why is land being flat a good thing? Well, it means that you can do things like build shelters. If it was all hilly and you, you're lying to sleep on the ground, then you're going to roll out of bed in the morning. So having flat places to build your shelters was an extremely important thing. And as we said, there was forest all around, just like at Creswell Crags giving you somewhere to find the animals, to find nuts and berries, and to find your wood for your fire and for building. And as you can see, because they were building using uh, the wood, then that forest became very important to them. So you've got two very different places there that Stone Age people would live. Okay, so you've got Sheffield here, got Creswell Crags just below, and Starkar further north, okay? But if we go even further north than that, we've got the Orkney Islands, which are in the far north of Scotland. It's these islands which are beyond Scotland, further north. OK. Um, this is what the Orkney Islands look like now. Really beautiful place. Nice clear sea. You can see people live there up on the hills and they're farming on those um, those grassy hills. But 170 years ago, in 1850, there was a huge storm. Now, the storm blew away lots of sand from the beach on one of the Orkney Islands, and a secret was revealed. And that secret was 4,000 years old. So the storm revealed this. 
which was a Stone Age village. So 4,000 years ago, there had been a Stone Age village at, on the island called Skara Bray. Okay, and you can see this. Now, I'm going to show you another video now, which talks us through what they found at Skara Bray and what um, the houses were like. So let me just find that. Here we go. I'll enlarge this and have a look at this one. Strong storms in the area in 1850 revealed the remains of a settlement previously hidden underground. Vestiges of seven settlements were discovered, each connected by corridors. And all the houses had been constructed in a similar way, with a fireplace in the middle of the room and a display shelf at the back. The room was divided by thin stone slabs, which are thought to have been used as beds. More shelves were built above these beds. A rock tool was also found on the outlying site. These carefully carved stone implements are also unusual. It's believed that they were used in rituals and probably displayed on the shelf at the back of the room. This grave mound is seven meters high and 35 meters in diameter. Samples of human bone were found in this large stone chamber, however, not enough to give more indications about the person who was buried here. The chamber has a hole in the wall. Behind it is a smaller room. It's believed that the actual remains of the defunct were placed in this room. These mysterious megalithic remains in the northern wilds of the British Isles provide a glimpse of life in the ancient world. Okay, so that was what it looked like and in Scarborough Bray when they dug away all of the earth and after that storm had blown the sand away. So, um, loads of evidence was found at Scarborough Bray. And in Scarborough Bray, people lived in houses made of stone. So not shelters anymore, not something small that you can put up and uh, put down again. These are permanent. So people weren't moving around anymore. They were actually settling and staying in one place and building stone houses that were built to last. And you can see, like as she said, she talked about there being a fireplace in the middle of the home. So the chimney would be directly above it. And in this box over here was a bed. And we're going to talk a little bit more about those beds in a minute. So let's have a look at the information about Skara Bray. So the people at Skara Bray lived tightly packed together in individual houses. Each house has the same layout. Each has a small doorway that would have been blocked by a slab of stone. Opposite each door, Large stone dressers are still intact where important objects could be displayed. Uh, so we saw that on the video. But secret places have also been found under the stone dresser for other objects. On either side of the living space were stone beds. Now that doesn't sound very comfortable talking about a stone bed, but have a look, which would have been filled with bracken and heather and covered with animal skins. So bracken is these green leaves here that you see growing in forests. And heather is this, um, this, this flower that also grows on hillsides. You get a lot of it in the Peak District around Sheffield. So this stone bed would have been absolutely filled with these plants, making it quite soft to sleep on. So you didn't get itched by the plants, you then covered it over with an animal skin. So it's been very warm. The objects found at Skara Bray were mo mainly made from stone, clay or animal products. Wood was not used because there were hardly any trees. The objects discovered at the site include tools, pins, pots and needles made from bone and stone, including 15 stone axe heads. 
Some small stone pots contained red colouring material. What else did they find? They found pottery decorated with lines and swirls. There's somebody making a pottery vase there. They found beads and animal teeth from rabbits and uh, two teeth of a whale, which could have been necklaces. Uh, carved stone balls, which may have been used in religious ceremonies. So religious things are anything to do where you're worshipping a god or gods. So they think those carved stone balls might have been used for that. Uh, so, OK, well, we spent last week learning about hunter gatherers. But if they've built these great big stone houses, were they still hunter gatherers? Were they still moving around from place to place, following the animals? Let's have a look. Additionally, archaeologists found large quantities of animal bones and debris from shellfish. This means that we know that the people who lived at Scarabray were farmers, rearing cattle and sheep and growing barley and wheat. So they weren't moving anymore. Instead of following the animals, they were building fences and keeping the animals in one place. Uh, that meant that they did not have to move because there were always animals living near them. Uh, and then it also says growing barley and wheat. So they were able to make bread because they grew the, the things that they needed to be able to make bread with. Their diet contained meat from cattle, sheep and deer, fish, eggs from seabirds, as well as lots of shellfish, oysters, crabs, cockles and mussels. So these are all shells that they'd have found walking into the sea around the shore in the rocks. They'd have found all of those uh, things which are good to eat. So no, they didn't move. And because they didn't move, they could build those solid stone houses. So in the late Stone Age, people began farming animals and crops. They lived in more settled communities. So now what we're going to do is we're going to finish by watching another video. And this one um, has a family very similar to the last family we looked at uh, last lesson. Or was it the lesson before? Uh, of a family in the late Stone Age. OK, so they're no longer hunter gatherers. These are now farmers. And this family lived by a river. So it's not Scarborough Bray, but it is a very similar setup. So let's have a look at that. That's our dinner. Guess what we just saw? An eagle took the baby boar that we were hunting for dinner. It was massive! <sighs> oh, an eagle? That's not good. It'll be after the farm animals if we're not careful. It is six and a half thousand years ago, and a huge change is transforming life in Britain. Farming. Sheep, goats, and different types of cattle have been introduced from over the sea. There are also new crops, barley and wheat. People are no longer nomadic. Now they are farmers, building the first new permanent homes to live in. These house walls are being made by covering branches with mud mixed with animal dung. <coughs> <coughs> For goodness sake, we have to use it to make the mud daub stick. We'll have to ask our ancestors to provide us with a good harvest. We won't have a harvest if we don't keep these birds off. Shoo, shoo! Yes, that's your job, children. Keep the birds off the seeds and that eagle away from our animals. It looks hungry. Farming began about 10,000 years ago in the Middle East 
It was around 4,000 years later, people finally began farming in Britain. Now people are living in one place, rather than moving around all the time. They are able to settle, keep animals and grow crops. Now people live in one place. It's a whole new way of life. In the old days, we followed the herd. The animals we hunted for food. We picked the berries from the bush and the roots from the ground. We didn't stay in one place all the time. Ah, the good old days. Good old days? Are you telling me you'd rather have to make camp and then break it all down again every time you had to move on? It's just strange sleeping under the same roof every night of the year. Oh, if your grandma was still alive, she'd be amazed how much things have changed. I miss grandma. I miss her too. But we can still visit her, up at the Long Barrow. In the new Stone Age, homes are built, not just for the living, but also for the dead. Long Barrows. Huge earth mounds or stone houses are erected, often on top of hills. Human bones are carefully placed inside them, usually not whole skeletons, but skulls and long bones. Building the long barrow is a monumental task, often taking thousands of hours. That is a lot of backbreaking work. I can't imagine a sheep on a boat coming over the sea. But that's how Grandad said they were first brought here. Oh no! Eagle! We're going to be in so much trouble. We have to protect our animals. We need them as much as we need a good harvest. I'm really sorry. I was too slow to shoot my arrow. We wouldn't have this problem if we were still hunter-gatherers. Another new useful invention at this time is pottery. This is to thank the ancestors at the Long Barrow for our plentiful harvest. Heating the clay to a high temperature hardens the pots ready for use. The Long Barrow is an important place for everyone to meet and worship. An offering to our ancestors. We have a lot to be thankful for. Thank you, Grandma. Come on, we have unfinished business. So there we go. That's what life was like as people moved into farming. OK, you're going to go on to uh, the quiz now. Uh, there's all those questions again. So if you want to, you can rewind back through the video, see if you can find the answers. And remember, at any point in the quiz, feel free to have another look at the video to uh, see if you can find the answers if you're not certain. OK, good luck.